My presentation topic is based on engineering ethics. I chose this topic because it is important for us as engineers and aspiring engineering managers to be aware of how our technical work has far-reaching impacts on society. To give a brief background, I found that the recent GM recall case fits the bill of the type of ethical problems faced by engineers. In 2005, Amber was killed when she crashed, crashed her Chevy and the airbags failed to deploy. In 2009, Maria, driving a 2004 Saturn, fared off a highway, struck a tree, and died that night from internal injuries. What is common about the deaths of these two women, plus 11 others, all relates to GM vehicles having faulty ignition switches. Vehicles with the faulty ignition switches can cause the key to move out of the run position to the accessory or off position, leading to a loss of power. If the key turns to one of these positions, officials say the front airbags may not work if there is a crash. Investigation probes have indicated that GM was aware of the issue early as 2001. In the public eyes, this seems fair and wrong and could have, if GM taken actions early, could have avoided 13 deaths. I found that there have been articles and supporters that came to the defense of GM, but even they have admitted that they are not certain when GM understood the magnitude of the danger posed. As it turned out, the cost to GM to fix the switch would have been 57 cents excluding labor. The two big ethical questions, at least to me, are was GM's risk assessment about the faulty ignition switch reasonable and why was there such a long delay in the recall of 2.6 million vehicles following reports of 13 deaths and 31 front-end crashes. The new CEO admits that the company was slow to act and recent times indicates a major worldwide recall to not only fix the ignition switches but to include the replacement of lock cylinders, definitely increasing the financial woes of GM. Earlier this week, two unidentified engineers were suspended. The GM case, as well as other cases throughout history, such as the Challenger and Columbia accidents, are just few examples of ethical problems engineers face. Ethical cases can go far beyond issues of public safety and may involve bribery, fraud, environmental protection, fairness, honesty in research and testing, conflicts of interest. So why engineering ethics? Ethics is the study of the characteristics of morals. It deals with the moral choices that are made by each person in his or her relationship with other persons. Engineering ethics is the rules and standards governing the conduct of engineers in their role as professionals. The work of engineers can affect public health and safety and can influence business practices and even politics. One source of the ethical issues encountered in the course of engineering practice is a lack of knowledge. This is by no means a strange situation in engineering. Engineers often encounter such situations. By its nature, engineering design is about creating new devices and products. When something is new, many questions need to be answered. How well does it work? How will it affect people? Is it safe? Are there any repercussions? The answers to these questions 
are often only partly known. So to a large extent, an engineer's job is to manage the unknown. As an engineer, you can never be absolutely certain that your design will never harm anyone or cause detrimental changes to society. An engineer must test their design as thoroughly as time and resources permit to ensure that it operates safely and as planned. Engineers are encouraged to use their creativity to attempt to foresee the possible consequences of their work. In discussing engineering ethics, it is important to make a distinction between personal and professional. Personal ethics deals with how we treat others in our day-to-day -day lives. Professional ethics can be viewed as an extension of personal ethics, but it now involves choices on an organizational level rather than a personal level. It is also important to mention the role of law in engineering ethics. The practice of engineering is governed by many laws on the international, federal, state, and local levels. Many of these laws are based on ethical principles, although many are purely of a practical rather than a philosophical nature. There is also a distinction between what is legal and what is ethical. Many things that are legal could be considered unethical. For example, designing a process that releases a known toxic but unregulated substance into the environment is probably unethical, although it is legal. Conversely, just because something is illegal doesn't mean that it is unethical. For example, there might be substances that were once thought to be harmful, but have now been shown to be safe. Because law may not have caught up with the latest scientific findings, and if we wish to incorporate the substance into a product, it might be illegal to release these substances into the environment, even though there is no ethical problem in doing so. As an engineer, we are always minimally safe if we follow the requirements of the applicable laws. But in engineering ethics, we should seek to go beyond the stipulations of the law. Ethic problems rarely have a correct answer. So one can say ethic problems are like design problems. The essence of engineering practice is the design of products, structures, and processes. Oftentimes, there will be maybe two, even more designs that are very different, yet may perform identically. In engineering design, there is no unique, correct answer. Likewise, ethical problem solving shares these attributes with engineering design. There may be no unique, correct solution to most of the problems, but there will be a range of solutions that are clearly right, some of which may be better than others. There will also be a range of solutions that are clearly wrong. Other similarities between engineering ethics and engineering design involves the application of a large body of knowledge to the solution of the problem, and both of them involves the use of analytical skills. The first step in solving any ethical problem is to completely understand all of the issues involved. Once the issues are analyzed, an agreement is reached. It is clear what the resolution should be. Some techniques involved include the line drawing technique. It is especially useful for situations in which the applicable moral principles are clear, but there seems to be a great deal of gray area about which ethical principles 
Line drawing is performed by drawing a line and creating polar opposites. Moral problems are placed along the line in accordance with where it is perceived and that which fall on a continuum. By carefully examining this continu continuum, it is possible to determine whether the problem is more like the positive or negative paradigm and therefore whether it is acceptable or unacceptable. In engineering ethics, flowcharting will be helpful for analyzing a variety of cases, especially those in which there is a sequence of events to be considered or a series of consequences that flows from each decision. An advantage of using a flowchart to analyze ethical problems is that it gives a visual picture of a situation and allows you to readily see the consequences that flow from each decision. Another area of ethical problem solving is looking at a choice between two conflicting moral values. In effect, conflict problems. In conflict problems, it can be solved in three ways. There is the easy choice, finding the middle ground, and then the hard choice. In most times, it is encouraged to find the middle ground. Keep in mind that it requires imagination, communication, and determination. As an engineer, we should be creative and be creative enough to seek options rather than choosing the easy way or opting for the hard way. Case in point, the boundary between a legitimate gift and a bribe is very subtle. So how can one ensure that accepting a gift doesn't cross the line into bribery? Bribery is illegal in the US and everywhere else in the world. It is considered a gray area in engineering ethics because sometimes the potential for gifts can be viewed as a bribe. By definition, a bribe is something such as money or a favor offered or given to someone in a position of trust in order to induce him to act dishonestly. So the boundary between a gift and a bribe is extremely subtle. All large corporations and some smaller companies have clear rules on what is acceptable. In the absence of such corporate guidelines, the problem-solving te problem techniques mentioned above can indeed be helpful. The line drawing technique can give us an easy visual to differentiate between the subtle differences of a bribe and a gift. It can tell us the value of the gift, and it can also look at the timing of the gift. Oftentimes, it will be clear what the ethical choice will be based on a well-drawn line. Likewise, full charting can be used to examine the consequences that will result from the acceptance or offer of a gift. When it comes to the rights and responsibilities of an engineer, the code of ethics of many professional engineering societies sometimes give us in great detail the responsibilities. However, these same codes don't discuss any of the professional rights that an engineer should enjoy. An engineer has a duty to protect the public, sometimes by blowing the whistle if necessary. When that engineer perceives that something is improper is being done in the organization. The engineer has a right to do this even if his employer feels that it is bad for the organization. When it comes to responsibilities, an engineer has the responsibility to keep information confidential. They should also avoid conflicts of interest. 
Avoiding conflict of interest is important in any profession, and engineering is no exception. A conflict of interest arises when an interest, if pursued, could keep a professional from meeting one of his obligations. With respect to competitive bidding, engineers in many states can now participate in competitive bidding. There are many ethical issues related to this practice, both from the engineer's perspective as well as the client's perspective. It is therefore an engineer's responsibility to be fair, honest, and ethical. Engineers actually also have rights that go along with these responsibilities. They are rights that individuals have regardless of their professional status. The most fundamental right of an engineer is the right of professional conscience. This involves the right to exercise professional judgment in discharging one's duties and to exercise this judgment in an ethical manner. This right is basic to an engineer's professional practice. For example, an engineer ought to be allowed to refuse to work, let's say hazardous work, if his conscience says that such work is immoral. Employers should be reasonably accommodating of that person's request. So in conclusion, I would like to make the statement that ethics are the moral standards used by people in making personal and business decisions. A company is judged by its reputation, which is a result of its integrity to the business role and its employees. The ethics of both the company's leaders and employers make up how that company is perceived and whether they are seen as ethical or not. I hope you enjoyed my presentation and I do encourage you to ask me questions. Thank you.